Hello, I'm Carolyn and in this video I'm going to show how you can use spirals in Inkscape to create frames for any cutting projects. Now this video is actually part two and I'll go through the basics of creating a tangle of spirals in the first video. If you've watched video part one, you'll already know that I save this tangle of spirals when there's still individual spirals. And what I've done for this project, I've deleted some of these spirals to create a frame. At the moment, these are all still individual spirals and they're all still a stroke line. So I need to make a few changes before I go any further. I'll select all of the spirals. I'll go path, stroke to path. While they're all still selected, I'll go path, union. Now looking closer, I can see I've got a few little areas that aren't going to look very neat when they're cut. But as I'm cutting a frame out of these, I might leave it for now because when I cut the frame out, I might be lucky enough to eliminate some of these small pieces. If not, I'll just remove them later. The choice is yours whether you remove them now or see what the design looks like once you've altered it a bit further. For the first example, I might start with a circle. Now I'm actually going to draw the circle on the frame to give me an idea of how it's going to look. I just find it makes it easier to size. Okay, that's the size I plan on using. This circle will be used to cut a circular hole in this frame. I then need a second circle to add a border around the frame. So to explain it, I'll just create it over here to try and make it a bit easier. So I'll use one circle to cut away from the frame. The second circle, I'm going to change it to a stroke I'll just select black. The colour doesn't matter. I'm going to remove the fill so you can see what I'm doing and I'm going to make this stroke line thicker. For the width I can't give you a measurement. What I would suggest is you make the width of the circle the same width you use for the spirals. Then when you cut it out you've got a uniform thickness. The circle at the moment is still a stroke. As it's a stroke line, I'll go path, stroke to path. You can see it's now a fill. So let's try and explain this again. One circle will be the cutout part. The second circle will be used to add a frame around the cutout. I'll just show the process and how it looks. Then I'll show a much easier way to actually do these steps. So I'll select the circle and I'll select the spirals. I'll go path, different. Now if we look at the frame, you can see we've cut out the circle and you see this spiral here and this spiral, they're not connected to the rest. So if I cut this out, these would actually cut separate. To hold it all together, I like to add a frame. So I'm just going to place the frame where I cut out the circle, select the spirals. This time I'll go path, union. Now that will cut out in one piece and you can see these spirals are now attached. This is where I double check if any parts need tidying up. And I can see this is a bit too small. And if I cut that out on a small frame, it's just going to look messy. So I like to go and delete them. And there's one frame completed in a few easy steps. Now I know in most of my videos, I always mention I work on a duplicate. I actually forgot this time. So what I might do is delete some of these spirals and I'll just use this one. So I've deleted some and I see I've got this spiral that's going to give me an open part. So I'm just going to change the spiral. So when I create the frame, it will have a closed perimeter. I'll select all of the spirals, go path, stroke to path, path, union. For this frame with the circular cutout, I showed why I used two circles and the process of how it was done. Now for this project, I'm going to show the way I actually do it when I'm creating these frames. So I'm going to draw the rectangle, 
size it and place it where I want it to be on the spirals. I actually think that's going to look pretty ugly but it will do for the video. At this stage I've drawn the rectangle that's going to be used for the cutout. I need one for the frame so what I do is I duplicate it and leave it where it is. So I'll duplicate it then I'm going to change this one to the stroke line only. So I'll give it a black stroke line so you can see it a bit better. Looking closer you can see this stroke line has got a very square edge. If I want to change that I can open fill and stroke. In stroke style I can change the join. So at the moment it's on mitre corner. I can change it to round. You can see I've now got a rounded corner or I can select mitre. As the spirals are round I might have a round join. And to change it from a stroke line I'll go path stroke to path. I'm going to click onto a blank part of the canvas to deselect the stroke line that's currently selected. I'll select the spirals holding down the shift key and I'm going to click on the color fill. If you're not very confident that you've selected the right one, if you look at the lower left I can see I've got a fill that's blue and I know the frame that I created is black. So it just gives me a clue as to which part selected and it's one of the reasons why I work with different colors. But of course how you do it is your own choice. While these are both selected I'll go path difference. So now the rectangles cut out, the spirals are selected, I'll hold down the shift key and select the frame. Then I'll go path union. Better zoom in again, I can see here I've got a part that's not going to cut very neatly. So I'll just select the nodes and delete them. Here's another one. Select the nodes, delete them. And there's a the second frame. In this video I've shown spirals but you can use other shapes. The process for cutting out a frame is exactly the same as the steps I've just shown. So if you'd like to create projects like this for your cutter, open Inkscape and give it a try. Thank you.